life cycle models we have uh, just seen this waterfall model called as classical waterfall model and this model or uh, the classical waterfall model was the basis and is the basis of all the models which we are presenting now and discussing now so what is now iterative waterfall model classical waterfall model is idealistic they are idealistic it assumes that no defect is introduced during any development activity it also says that the defect will be only found out in the testing phase but in practice defects do get introduced in almost every each phase of the life cycle this is a reality so defects they usually get detected much later in the life cycle which is not expected and not uh, agreeable also just for instance a design defect might be unnoticed until the coding or testing phase a design failure can cause a project failure but once a defect is detected what we need to do we need to go back to the phase where it was introduced again redo some of the work done during that and all subsequent phases that is why we are calling this as iterative waterfall model so we need to feedback we need to have feedback path in this classical waterfall model like this we had feasibility study requirement analysis design coding testing and then maintenance and then we have these feedback paths okay these paths are there error should be detected in each and every phase wherever they are introduced for instance if a design problem is detected in the design phase itself the problem can be taken care of there in that phase quite easily then say if it is identified at the end of the integration of system testing phase then phase containment of errors the reason being we need to rework that is rework must be carried out not only in the design phase if the problem is in design phase we have to rework in coding and testing phases as well the principle of detecting errors which is what we wanted to be very close or as close to its point of introduction this is known as phase containment of errors iterative water model waterfall model is by far the most widely used model let me re reiterate or re uh, tell you that this model iterative is the most widely used model almost every other model is derived from this waterfall model only okay but irrespective of the life cycle model actually follow the document the documentation should reflect a classical waterfall model of development and the comprehension of the docu documents should be facilitated we need to present the metaphor of a mathematical theorem which proves that a mathematician presents a proof as a single change of deductions but even though the proof might have come from a convoluted set of part partial attempts by delays and backtracks what it means it means that we need to see and try some arrangements that the error should never come in the later phases the error should have or the containment of error should be close to that point where we can easily remove it and the 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 propagation of error should not be there now we are coming to prototyping model what is this prototyping model before starting actual development we prepare a prototype right we build a prototype of the system this is just a toy implementation of a system just we if we uh, try to an an analyze or make an analogy with respect to a building we make a prototype we make a model first and this toy implementation has limited capabilities it is not reliable the performance is also not good why we need to develop a prototype what are the reasons behind it first we need to show it to the customer illustrate or demonstrate to the customer we need uh, data formats messages reports or interactive uh, dialogues which should be there so that he can understand what is going to be built and then also some analysis and examination of technical issues which are uh, associated with the development of the uh, product software product so there will be some major decision or major design uh, design decision with response uh, say response time of a hardware controller or uh, some algorithm is there and we need to find out that whether the algorithm is efficient or not or uh, the third reason for developing a prototype is you can't get the thing right at the first time you must plan to throw away the first product if you want to develop a good product so start with the approximate requirements carry out a quick design prototype model is built using several shortcut methods like inefficient inaccurate or dummy functions the function may use uh, say table lookup rather than performing the actual computation the developed prototype is then submitted or given to the customer presented to him for evaluation 
and he gives or uh, he returns some feedback or requirements as and they are refined this cycle continues until the user approves the prototype and the actual system is developed using the classical waterfall approach so prototyping is done and all these prototyping will uh, end up with the final development employing your classical waterfall approach so requirement gathering quick design evaluation by you know user refine requirement again build prototype this circle goes on until customer is satisfied then we design implement test and maintain requirement analysis and specification it becomes redundant because final working prototype with all the user refinement which has been given as a feedback serves as a any better requirement specification and this uh, design and code for this prototype is usually uh, you know they they are thrown or they are uh, scrapped the experience gathered is important for development of uh, this prototype it helps in great deal while developing the actual product the construction of working uh, prototype model involves additional cost this is there but uh, the overall development it might uh, cost lower because system with unclear user requirement system with unresolved technical issues is never accepted so many user requirement get properly defined here and technical issues are resolved properly and these would uh, have appeared later later some in change request or maintenance phase and resulted in incurring massive resign and redesign cost then we have evolutionary model what is this evolutionary model also known as successive version of incremental model so incremental model and evolutionary model they are similar the system is broken down into several modules several paths which then can be incrementally implemented and then delivered we develop the core modules the basic modules important modules of the system the initial skeleton is this, uh, this uh, then refined with increasing level of capability that is we want to add now various new functionalities in successive versions and the successive version of the product functioning systems they are capable of performing some useful work a new release may include various new functionality existing functionality in the current, current release might have been enhanced this is also possible so diagrammatically we can show we have a here module we add b here we add c here this is how evolutionary model or incremental model works what are the advantages of evolutionary model first users get a get a chance to experiment with a partially developed system much before the working version is actually released and it also helps in finding out user exact requirements again much or well before the working system is developed these core modules are again and again tested so this reduces the chances of any errors in the final product but often difficult to uh, the disadvantage is difficult to subdivide problems into function units which can be incrementally implemented and delivered evolutionary model is useful for very large problems when it is quite easier to find these modules for incremental implementation not for uh, you know small problems what about evolutionary model with iteration this version this version many organization use a combination of iterative and incremental development so a new release may include new functionality existing functionality from the current release may also have been modified there are several advantages of this training can start on an early release so customer feedback we can get customer feedback and that can be shared and taken into account and be incorporated a markets can be created that's for functionality that can that has never been offered so once the user is uh, glued to your software now you can add with amount with some uh, fun so frequent releases allow developer to fix unanticipated problems quickly then we come to spiral model it was proposed by bohem in 1988 and each loop of the spiral that is why we call it as a spiral that it represent a phase of the software process the innermost loop represent the you know system feasibility it is quite concerned with the system feasibility then comes the next loop which is uh, software requirements definition the next one will come as a system design and so on and so forth there are no uh, fixed phases in this model the phases shown just now are just examples the t i'll show you just now the team must decide first to how to structure the project into phases this is very important and then start for using some generic model that is you know you can add extra phases just for some specific project when problems are identified during a project and this each loop in the spiral which i'm going to show you just now is split into four quadrants or four sectors this is spiral in the shape of spiral we need to determine the objectives identify and resolve risk then develop the next level of product and then customer evaluation of design so this first may be you know requirement specification then you have feasibility requirement specification design and so on and so forth what is the objective setting in first quarter this one 
identifying objectives of the phase means examining their risk associated with these objectives risk what are these risk any adverse or unacceptable circumstances that might hamper the successful completion of a software project and then finding the alternative solution possibility what about the second quadrant risk assessment and reduction for each identified project risk we create a detailed analysis we carry out a detailed analysis and then we take steps to reduce or minimize this risk just for instance if there is a risk that the requirements are inappropriate a prototype system may be developed then develop and validation third quadrant we develop and validate the next level of the product then fourth quadrant we review and plan we review the results which have been uh, which are achieved uh, so far with the customer and we plan the next iteration around the spiral and with each iteration around the spiral we progressively you know we make complete version of the software which gets built what about the spiral model as a beta model meta model it subsumes all discussed models a single loop spiral represent waterfall model if you use an evolutionary approach iteration through the spiral are evolutionary levels it enables understanding and then prompt a reaction to the risk during each uh, iteration along the spiral and what are it uses the uses are prototyping as a risk reduction mechanism and retaining the stepwise approach of the water model waterfall model itself so what about the comparison of this different life cycle models right from the classical to spiral iterative waterfall model it is used most widely used model, but suitable only for well understood problems but prototype model is suitable for projects not well understood user requirement and technical expertise if this is not a well understood prototyping model is good evolutionary model this is suitable for large problems and we can decompose into set of modules that can be incremented and incrementally implemented and incremental de uh, delivery of the system is acceptable to the customer then we employ evolutionary model and spiral model it is suitable for development of technically challenging software product products that are subject to several kind of risks so risk analysis and risk is the basis uh, of spiral model so this uh, is a complete uh, overview of various life cycle models and which is most of you which is not i hope uh, you got an idea that uh, these are the life cycle model how life cycle goes for a software thank you so much take care of yourself